Welcome to the Good Karma Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Ryan Van Fleet. And welcome to the Crush It and Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Melinda Van Fleet. Well, how's it going, Captain Ryan? It's good. It's good. Fished a couple days this week. It was very windy. We made the most out of it. We caught some beautiful fish. Awesome. Well, I decided to put our monthly joint podcast that we've been doing gosh, for two and a half years now Yep. on the Crush It and Sales podcast. If you listened to my podcast last week that was kind of on social media, but also a lot of mindset things too, I really am making even more of a conscious effort to do what feels good for me, what works best with my timeline, with my strategy, and looking at ROI. So when I thought to myself, what should I do for my Crush It and Sales podcast this week? I knew that Ryan and I had this podcast idea slated as our topic for the month. And I actually thought it felt better to put it on the Crush It and Sales podcast. So today we're going to share our best success secrets i.e. how to create momentum and be successful. And I'm really excited to talk to you about this, Ryan. Yes. Because <laughs> it's something that I'm going to say we both do extremely well and has definitely contributed to our success in both of our businesses and in our lives. And I do believe it's something other people really struggle with. So we're really hoping that this podcast helps and inspires a lot of people out there. So, Ryan, you are amazing at practicing, <laughs> embodying, using the tools, and having all of that compound over time. Yes. Would you like to share an example of something that you have mastered? And I'm going to say mastered. You do an excellent job of mastering things, which is why I do believe that people listen to your podcast but, dun, 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 are they doing the work? <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I don't know. I, I Like I said, I, if you know my story, I've as far as um, the fish that I've learned and the structure behind how I do things, and you should just go back and listen to a few podcasts from the old days. Um, you know, it's, it's for me... I get some. I do this like unknowingly, really. In terms of just, <laughs> yeah, it's just like it comes practicing? down in, in practicing. It just I do it unknowingly sometimes. I just it's like repetitiveness. Well, but you really make the effort to say, "Hey, I'm working on this." I mean, I can't remember when we've told this story. I'm sure we have, but when we lived at Anchor Condos and you were trying to figure out how to tie knots. Yeah, learning how to tie I mean, knots. I'll never, ever, ever forget yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I, it's so funny. I, you know, I, I've talked about it before, but captains really did not show me, and they weren't very like for like, they weren't very welcoming. And you've said that before. And it's I, not and new information. It's not new information. <laughs> it's not new information. So I had to really like learn how to tie knots so I could survive, and I would I would literally get done with a charter. And when I was mating, I come home, my hands were all cut up because I was still like, you know, super rough out and trying to figure out how to heal wounds quickly. That was another thing. So I and could how tie, to hold the fish and how and to what hold the yeah. species were. Yeah, how to yeah. hold fish, how to do all this stuff. And oh my gosh, my hands will be just tore up. Yeah. So and not to mention, you know, you still have to tie knots. And I would literally stay up all night. Yep, sitting on the brown couch. Sitting on the brown couch, doing nothing but tying knots. Yep. In the dark, and well, it wasn't my, dark because you couldn't see them. Yeah, like it was dark outside. It was dark outside, and and one of the things that I've always been told is that you, when I was first learning how to do it, is like you should be able to tie this with your eyes closed. So what I do, I would tie it with my eyes closed, mm. and that's the big thing is like when you're out there fishing, you should be able to multitask, tie a knot, uh, without and and. And being also being aware of your surroundings, so, uh, so that's what I would do, and it sucked. But when I was doing it, I didn't really think about it sucking. I just thought about it like I needed to learn how to do this. Um, it's so funny when I when I got out of school, 
and I got my first job, I did part of the thing was I got into technical stuff and I didn't know how to use a computer. Okay. I didn't know how to use Excel. I didn't even know what the hell Excel was. And when I went in for my interview, I told them I knew how to use Excel. Oh, I don't know this. Oh, God. So, this, and I needed a job. I needed a job. <laughs> so, I was an analyst at a coffee company. And I needed this job because I needed to pay some debt. So, this is where, this is the best example of this. So, I did not know how to use a computer. I didn't know anything about Excel. When I was in school, I, like... I was a really shitty typer. I just couldn't. <laughs> You've even I, improved since you started with this with me. Yeah, I'm horrible. I was horrible at it. So Years later. Years later. So this is what I'm getting down to it. And then I'm going to tell you guys, this is a true story. I didn't know how to use any computers. I got hired on as a statistical analysis um, quality and quality control. And I didn't know. I, I failed statistics. <laughs> I do believe that. I sure. I failed statistics. I actually like somehow I, I I'm not going to get into it, but let's just put it like this. I I managed um yeah, I'm not going to tell you anything more, but anyway, so I failed it pretty bad. And I was So you got put into this job. So I got put into this job. That had I got skills that yep. A requirement that you did not have. That I did not have. I lied. I told them that I could do this. I told them I was an excellent typer. So I remember I was living in Chicago and I was, I would literally, I went and at that time there was no internet or how to learn how to do anything, nor did I know how to use the internet because I didn't use it in college. Like guys were learning how to use it. I was like, ah, you know, all I care about was going fishing and and all oh, that stuff. Oh, it's just starting. I'm it was just one year starting. Older than you. It was it just, just started, starting. Like so, I went and yeah. I bought books, and I would hold myself up in this room that I rented from this lady, and from and I would stay up all night reading these books, and I'd go into work at like I'd sleep for a couple hours, and then I would go into work at three o'clock in the morning, and the guard thought I was crazy. He said I got to go in. I got to do security work and or as far as I, not security work, but I got to go into my computer and do work because I got to get data enter, entered. So I would go in at three o'clock in the morning and I needed to have data entered by eight o'clock in the morning. So I would go in at three because I knew that it was going to take me forever mm -hmm. to learn and practice. So when nobody was there, I would start and I would learn. I'd have the books with me because there was nobody else around. And I would just, there was night shift going on and I was just holed up in my office. And I was learning and practicing and learning and practicing. And from there, I literally learned how to do all that and and more. As, and I just, from repetitiveness and practicing, yeah, I was, practice. I practiced and I practiced and I practiced. And from there, then I started building databases and then I advanced rather quickly in that industry. So, um it just came from putting in the work and putting it in the repetitiveness. And you want to talk about stress. That was like, I lied. <laughs> I didn't even know the story. I'm like, oh, no. I had no clue. And so. I never lied so, to get a job. Yeah, I did. On that one. I did. So when I got, when I started um, learning how to tie knots, it was the same thing. I hold up at night and I literally would stay up and I would sit there and I would practice and I would practice and I would practice. I'd learn the essential knots I needed to learn and the knots that the captains wanted me to tie. And that's what I did. Yeah. So And you've done that with every single thing. And I've done that with every single thing. That goes down to boat control, which you're going to see in the new Land Shark video coming up. Um, as far as how you position boats on wrecks. Oh my God! And, um, I, and it's and I have to say this is a really important tidbit: is when Ryan goes to start something new, he often forgets this. So as a couple, I do remind him. I can't remember what it was pretty recently, but then I reminded you that when you started working with your client for the Sea Hunter. You were nervous. And then within like two days, you had that boat down pat. Yeah. So everything you go 
to try or do, I like do better than try, mm -hmm. is always going to be scary the first time. Yeah. But as you do it and as you practice and you get it down pat, it becomes easier. So sometimes you just have to remember what you have done before, what you accomplished. Yep. Don't live in that pattern, but just have like this little like, oh, I, I did this before. I'll be okay. I'll be okay. I'll figure this out. Take a deep breath and then do it. Clear your mind, take a deep breath, and then do it. Right. So that's it. That's, I, just, that's part of the work too. Yep. So thinking that you can cheat, even though Ryan just told a story where he lied. I but, cheated. But, I had to like I had to like, get a job. But you didn't cheat, cheat. But my point is like that there's a shortcut, right? Yeah. There's really no shortcuts. Of course, there's shortcuts in terms of hiring a coach or taking a course or reading a book watching a YouTube video, listening to a podcast, yes. But you still have to do the work, right? The coach can't do it for you. The course can't do it for you. The book can't do it for you. You know what I mean? So Ryan sells courses all day long. I sell a good amount of courses now too. Not as many as Ryan because I am, you know, just started more recently in the fall. I don't have as much as him. But we often wonder, like, who's actually, like, doing the course? Like, are you doing the course when you bought it or you just bought it? Like, do the course, do the work. Like, you have to sometimes watch things several times. I just pulled up a course this morning that I bought three years ago because I was like, oh, I wonder if she put out a new module. It's evergreen. And she did. And I had it playing, and Ryan kind of listened to it as well. Like, we still go back and revisit things. So revisit things and do the work and embody it. And it's the practice and the compounding effort over time that makes you successful, mm -hmm. that builds the momentum and makes you successful. So, you know, it's funny too, one of the stories I wanted to share is that, you know, the people that think that everything's so easy, you know, it, it's just really not. So as you're going through these things and you're working towards your success and whatever it is, whatever aspect of your life, stop looking or, and caring about the other people around you. Like you, you really have to put on your horse blinders, you know, those big like Clydesdale horses, like yeah. the big Budweiser horses that yeah. have the blinders or like a race horse, you know, going around the track, they have blinders. You have to do the same thing and not care about what the other people do because you also have to realize that the majority of people don't do what we're talking about. They just really don't. You might even be listening to this podcast and still not do it. You'll turn off the podcast and be like, eh, yeah, whatever, and like go on with your day and still never like do yeah. what you need to be doing. It's just unfortunately life and why, you know, the personal development space is $38 billion in 2019. I keep saying this number. I want people to understand that so they can embody it and go, oh, I don't want to be one of those numbers, right? I want to be the person who succeeds, who builds success, who builds momentum. So Ryan knows somebody yes. who this is a good called story. him a couple months ago yep. and was beside himself that someone else created a business model that was pretty much the same as his. You can say knocked him off or whatever. Yep. And Ryan was... Took his clients. Took his clients. Yep. Good point. Took his clients and his buddy was beside himself and Ryan was on the phone with him. Yeah, he was pretty, and, he was upset. Yeah, and you were on the phone with him a good hour, would you yeah, say, right? Yeah, he had and, a lot of, he lost a lot of people that he thought were loyal oh, to him. Yeah. And when you think about loyalty, loyalty to me means a lot. I'm very loyal. Yeah, you are, and, when, and I am too. And when loyal, somebody wrecks that, like when you have clients that you think are loyal, like this person had, and then they go to somebody else because they're he's going to give them a little, like a little less money for something. Mm -hmm. And that hurt. That hurts a, a person like that who yeah. takes care of people. Yep. So, so Ryan was on the phone with him for an hour. And when Ryan hung up, we looked at each, each other and said, let's see how long this other person lasts. Yep. So, <laughs> yep. so before I hung up. It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to do what he does. And he's in the fishing industry and it's not easy. And so, how long did the other person last? Yeah. So when he, when he told me about this, I got a good laugh because I see it all the time down here. And it's like this everywhere nowadays. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Not just in the keys. It's not just everywhere. It's everywhere. So somebody's got a new trick or whatever, you know. So I tell him, this guy's not going to last. 
what you do is extremely hard. <laughs> you have you have it dialed in. This somebody new isn't going to be able to figure that out for years. And when that happens, these guys are going to be crawling back to you, begging you to for your service. And know what you're going to do? You're going to charge them more. So I get a phone call. Yeah, not even two like not six even weeks, not even six weeks something. ago. It was fast. It was really fast. Um, the guy quit because right. it already because it was too hard, and to do what my friend does consistently, and those guys came begging back, begging back, or coming back to him begging for the service, and now he's charging them. Twice as much. Is it twice as much? Yeah. Wow. Yep, twice as much, which I told him to do. Yeah. So. Yeah, so our point is, is just keep your racehorse blinders on. Do the work and let the success compound. It will happen. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. So just get that out of your head. Just know it takes time, but don't worry about the time. Just do the work. Do the work. Yes. Do the work. Yep. Anything else you want to add? I think we're going to try to keep this kind of tight because we know people are busy and we really appreciate yeah. everyone listening to the podcast. So thank you. Yep. I've that. been, um, I have been quiet on the podcast front because I've got some projects that I'm working on. Like I've been putting a lot of time into it and I have a, a new blog that's coming out and I'll be doing a podcast separate from it is how Wahoo see color. How Wahoo see color. Um, it is in-depth, and when you go through it, it's, it's, it's really good. And I'm really proud of it because it's going to really help you guys. It's what people have been asking for, and I put it all down on paper. So if you have a guide, you can go back through it and read through it. It's got a little bit of comedy to it. Mm. Um, I have a fish conspiracy brain. I think that come, came out of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Along with all the other conspiracy theorists, things, mine came out a fish conspiracy theorist, uh, theorist or whatever the hell you want to call it. Be careful what you say. You'll start off some like oh, crazy uh, hater. Yeah, I'll start <laughs> off some hater thing. Woo! <laughs> all right, that's all I got. But yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, I will... Um, announce it when it's ready, but it will be on my website, which I am working on. And what I have in store for the website is going to be great. You'll be able to go back and do some other stuff with that. So I'm not going to get into that today. So Awesome. Awesome. And if you're interested in private coaching, you can email me at melinda at melindavanfleet.com. Check out my website, melindavanfleet.com, or the show notes that has more information about all the other things. So until next week, Thank you again for listening, and I hope you crush it in sales. Thank you guys for listening. Really appreciate it. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at goodkarmasportfishing underscore FL underscore keys. And remember, anytime you're fishing, it's all good. <laughs>